For the majority of human history, our understanding of how the world works made it perfectly feasible to think that the Earth was the unmoving center of the universe and that the sun, moon, and stars all orbited us. About 500 years ago, with the introduction of the Copernican heliocentric model of the solar system, we began to understand that the Earth was not the center. And while the Copernican model turned out to be inaccurate, it did lead to the laws of planetary motion discovered by Joseph Kepler in which the planets all move around the sun in predictable elliptical orbits. This discovery had many religious and scientific repercussions, and packed into this new understanding was the fact that the Earth moves. Not only does it move, but it moves relative to the sun, the source of the energy that supports life and controls our climate. Since the time of the Copernican Revolution, we've developed a much deeper understanding of how the Earth moves and how these movements influence the flow of energy from the sun to the planet and back out into space. The orbit is an ellipse. An ellipse is an oval-like shape defined in terms of the distance the curve is from two symmetrical focal points. For orbiting planets, one of these focal points is the sun. The elliptical orbit means that the Earth moves closer and further away from the sun during the 365 days it takes to complete a single orbit. The point in the orbit when a planet is closest to the sun is called perihelion. For Earth, this occurs on January 4th. The point in the orbit where the planet is furthest from the sun is called aphelion, which is on July 4th for us. Distance is one of the factors that controls the amount of energy reaching the Earth from the sun, so the shape of the orbit influences the amount of energy reaching us over the annual cycle. We actually receive slightly less energy from the sun during the northern hemisphere's summer than we do during the northern hemisphere's winter. The difference is not as great as shown in this diagram. We are about 146 million kilometers from the sun at perihelion and about 152 million kilometers at aphelion, a difference of only about 4%. An important property of an ellipse is its eccentricity. This is a description of the degree to which the shape deviates from a perfect circle. The closer the shape is to a circle, the less eccentric it is. The greater the difference between the radius of the x and y axes, the greater the eccentricity. Earth's eccentricity varies over a roughly 100,000 year cycle due to the gravitational pull of other planets altering its path over time. So the 4% difference from aphelion to perihelion is not consistent. It varies with changes in the planet's eccentricity. In addition to orbiting the sun, the Earth rotates around its own axis once a day. This rotation is counterclockwise when viewed from the North Pole, causing the sun to appear to rise from the east. The axis of rotation is not perpendicular to the plane of the Earth's orbit around the sun. It is tilted at an angle of 23 degrees. This is called the obliquity of the tilt. The obliquity of Earth's tilt changes with time, varying between 21.1 and 24.5 degrees over a 41,000 year cycle. This 23 degree tilt in the angle of the Earth's rotation relative to the plane of its orbit around the Sun causes the seasons. Because as the Earth orbits the Sun, the tilt causes the point closest to the Sun to change. At the point in the orbit where the tilt causes the northern hemisphere to be pointed away from the Sun, a line along 23 degrees south latitude is closest to the Sun. This is the southern hemisphere's summer. At the opposite side of the orbit, when the northern hemisphere is pointed towards the sun, a line along 23 degrees north latitude is closest to the sun. This is the southern hemisphere's winter. Halfway between these points in the orbit, the equator is closest. This occurs in the spring and the fall. These two extreme points where the angle of the tilt puts 23 degrees of latitude closest to the sun are called the solstices. They occur once per year for each hemisphere. The southern hemisphere's summer solstice is the northern hemisphere's winter solstice, and vice versa. The halfway po point between each solstice is called the equinox. It also occurs twice a year and is the point when the sun is closest to the equator. In addition to the change in obliquity of the tilt, there is a wobble in the rotation that causes the orientation of the tilt to change relative to the orbit around the sun. Unlike the obliquity, this does not change the angle of the tilt, just its orientation. This is called the procession of the axis and causes the timing of perihelion and aphelion dates to change. It is a 23,000 year cycle. Over the cycle, the point in the year where the Earth is closest and furthest from the sun changes. 
In addition to the Earth's rotation around its own axis once a day and its orbit of the Sun once a year, the Moon-Earth system rotates once a month, our solar system moves relative to the rest of the galaxy, and our galaxy is in motion relative to the rest of the universe. But it is the first two, our daily rotation around our own axis and our annual orbit of the Sun, that dominate patterns of energy flow from the Sun to the Earth. The dominant patterns are daily cycles, changes over the annual cycle, and changes with latitude. Variations in our orbit driven by changes in eccentricity, the tilt of the axis, the obliquity of the tilt, and its precession influence longer-term variations in climate. These longer-term variations that influence climate are called Milankovitch cycles. These cycles contribute to the longer-term variations in solar insulation, where solar insulation is the amount of sun energy, that is electromagnetic energy, that reaches the surface of the Earth. Milankovitch cycles are well studied, and while these cycles don't map perfectly onto patterns of climate change found in the geological record, work to understand these cycles has contributed to our understanding of how changes in solar insulation have influenced our climate over the past few million years.